Here is our revised x defined type to go with our revised grammar. So we have all the things we had before, except that now we have lambda. The relevant parts of a lambda are the name of the argument and the body of the, of the lambda expression. We don't have to remember the word lambda or the curly braces around the argument name. We've also replaced our appy with one that has a function expression instead of just a function name that was a symbol. For example, if we parse this curly expression as an s expression, lambda x plus x1, then we generate a lam e, right? That outer expression is a lambda represented by a lam e. Lam e has two parts, the name of the argument as a symbol, right? Not an arbitrary expression, it always has to be a name, so we represent it with a symbol. And then an expression for the body. The expression is plus x1, so that's a plus e with id x and num1. Here's another example. This has two curly braces at the beginning. So that second curly brace is a lambda, but the first one means function call. So that's going to be an app e of a lam e. It's the same lam e that we saw before. And then the argument expression is 10, so that's a num e. And here's what the parse function looks like when we make that addition. We have a new lambda case here where we construct a lam e. We have to do some work to pull out that symbol name there. And then we have to do some work to pull out that body expression and parse the body expression. This application form, it's the last case in our interpreter because if we haven't found lambda or let or plus or times uh, after a curly brace, then we assume it's a function call and we parse the function and argument expressions.